Hi, and welcome to Speaking of Making Money. Uh, before I begin, I wanted to let you all know that this is actually my second recording of this same webinar. Kathy and I tried to get it recorded the first time that I gave it, and unfortunately, the quality of the, of the playback was so atrocious, it was, it was unusable. So here I am again for another hour, and I may cover slightly different material. We'll see, because you never know what comes out of your mouth when you're speaking live. Before I begin, I really want to thank Kathy David and IT Tech Pros for all of the work they've done to make this a presentation for all of us to hear. I think it's, it's right to give thanks to the people that, that help you, and it just wouldn't be possible without her and IT Tech Pros. And I also want to let you all know that by through, um, through sifting through all of that I've learned and to spit it out for you today, it's been a gift to me. It means that I've been able to comprehend and find the pearls of wisdom that are the Mickey Motos of the material I've dredged through. So in other words, helping you helped me, and I thank you so much. So I assume that we are all here today. Let's see if I can get this to work to learn how to become a powerful and paid speaker. Basically, do you want to spread your message and make money? Or do you want to learn the tricks of the, that the professionals use and learn how to make more money? Well, you're in luck because since the Best Selling Author Summit, I've taken at least 50 hours of intensive training from different sources to learn how to do this. And I'm boiling it down in less than an hour for you. So woohoo, let's begin. First, you must know that as a live speaker, one of my sassy, slow and steady SIA principles applies. Get comfortable with uncertainty. Risk creates rewards. And being a live speaker puts you in the break a leg category of entertaining. Anything that can will go wrong. And I'm not trying to be negative, I promise. I'm just suggesting that you be prepared for anything and everything. This recording is an example of that. Unfortunately, the first recording wasn't perfect, and it wasn't even imperfect. It was imperceptible, so we had to do it again. And Kathy and I figured out a workaround. It's always an opportunity for something better. Uh, make sure that whatever comes along, you just have fun. If you're having fun, your audience is having fun too, because your audience is as excited about your speech as you are. If you're having fun, so are they. Besides, you can get through it, and you will get through it. Just know you can. You've got to believe that. Remember that once you're on stage, you're a role model for everyone in the room. Exude energy and confidence. Basically, it's showtime. And no matter how you feel on the inside, don't show it on the outside. You don't need to be perfect, but you need to be present, and you must exude passion and huge energy. The rewards you get for from live speaking engagements are both intrinsic and extrinsic. You can teach your message, which helps others, and make money doing that. So that's the intrinsic value is feeling good and also teaching other people, and the extrinsic value is making money. I wonder how many people on this webinar are actually afraid to speak in public. Well, obviously, to give your message to the most people and share your message live, you're going to have to get over that fear. Ultimately, if not most speakers, many speakers have this fear. And they speak not because they have confidence, but because they have courage. I mean, if you think about it, some people who are missing self-doubt are in jail. They really don't have a good perspective of life. It's the people who have courage to do the things that they're scared to do, that do it even with their self-doubt. Those are the people that we want up on stage. Um, in other words, I, I think it's just it's time to embrace your self-doubt and harness that nervousness into huge energy on stage. Just to let you know, most people have insecurity about public speaking, and it's the number one fear above death. Even pros get nervous, but I believe it gives them the edge they need to be sharp and speak in the moment. If you have that fear, this webinar is not really intended to help you overcome that fear. It's to help you make money from speaking your message. However, if public speaking is your fear above death, there is still hope. Toastmasters is a great way to overcome that anxiety. Now it's time to tell my story of becoming a speaker. 
for me as a fitness coach, I wanted to spread my message to more people and make more money. One-on-one -on -one training, fitness training, and nutrition consulting was rewarding, but only taught a few people my philosophy on how to live healthier and more contented lives. It also didn't bring in as much money as I would have liked. I wanted to ensure that my mission statement, which is to educate, inspire, and entertain, was being broadcast on a, uh, on a larger platform and that I was making more money. I realized that in order to do this, keynote speaking and wellness seminars were the way to go. This meant that I wanted to become a public speaker, so I joined Toastmasters in September of 2010. And again, I highly recommend Toastmasters as an inexpensive and highly organized way to learn how to speak. If you do go, I recommend you go to several different clubs that fit your timetable because each club has a different personality. And find the one that you like where you can speak a lot and polish your skills. Jumping forward in 2013, I've done a few paid pre presentations and has, have spoken at the best-selling author summit, but I haven't really figured out how to make substan substantial money doing any of these things. And that's why I really put the 50 plus hours of intensive training to figure this out. In the last year, and especially the last four weeks, the time, effort, and money I've spent will help me cross from being an unpaid to a paid speaker. And one of the most important things I've learned recently, and I mean recently in the last week, is that I'm really not a public speaker, and neither are you. I'm a professional speaker, and so are you. I know it's a little corny to have those dollar signs in there, but that's really the difference between being a public speaker and a professional speaker, making money. After attending the most recent Toastmaster conference, I heard these magic words, and I realized at some point I crossed over from being a public speaker to a professional speaker. And I can now tell people this is what I do for a living. It's actually kind of cool and empowering. Because really, even free gigs are professional development for any of us. They have real earnings potential. You can meet people who want to help you get your message to other people. So please, if you, if you learn nothing else today and you need to hang up the phone now, call yourself a professional speaker. It will make a difference in your bottom line. As a professional speaker, you'll need one of these. This is called a one sheet, or I've heard it referred to as a media kit. I, it's actually two-sided. This is just one side of a two-sided sheet. And this is something that you're going to want to have on your website and something that you'll want to mail out to people that you want to talk to. This, uh, this sheet is professional, and it needs to reflect your brand. This is the difference. The, depending on how good you are at creating this, it's the difference between being a few hundred dollar speaker and few thousand dollar speaker. And basically, you definitely want to be on the thousands end of it in this industry. Appearances, neat, sweet, and elite mean a lot in the speaking industry. And I learned that when meeting planners hire speakers, they need to learn to trust the speaker. They can't get fired for not hiring a speaker, but they can get fired for hiring a bad one. And if you're an unknown, do everything in your power to build trust and ingratiate yourself to those people you want as your audience. This is one great tool in your toolbox to have. This professional one is one that I created with a woman named Cheryl Rausch, and I can give you her information. She's um, at sparklepresentations.com. So if you, if you want a cyber introduction, you can email me at laura at muffintopple.com. She'd be happy to help you with it. She's the one that helped me comb through my website and spit back at me all of the accolades I had, I had received. I didn't want to boast about the things I've done because I'm a little bit shy that way. And she's like, this is not the time to be shy. You need to let people know what you've done. And boom, right there in front of me, I was a best-selling author just like you guys. And I have some other great things that I've done, and that will, that's on the other side of the sheet. It also shows exactly what my seminars provide so that when I send this to a corporation or I meet someone, I hand them the sheet and it will remind them of who I am. 
Uh, let's see, is there anything else I want to say about this? It's, uh, it is two-sided, but it's still got some limited real estate. So you really want to think about what you're going to put on here to build trust with the person who hires you. All right, now that we know what we need, it's time to talk about keynoting your story. It's time to talk about the speech. I assume that you're thinking of keynoting or presenting classes and workshops, and I personally believe that both need stories. I haven't read How to Story Sell by J.W. Dix and McNanton yet. I know we all received that generous gift as we were leaving the summit, but I truly believe that. People remember stories, and I'm a big storyteller, and it seems to be what people like. They can relate. You want to connect with your audience. Um, I just recently took a 31-hour class from speaker and stand-up comic Judy Carter. I learned a lot in that class. In fact, I learned so much, it's kind of hard to fit into my brain. It's still sifting through, and I'm trying to comprehend it. Uh, she had presenters who were radio hosts, Emmy Award-winning writers and producers, award-winning playwrights, global event planners or certified meeting planners, speaking managers, character actors, and a literary agent. It was a lot of material and a lot of really cool people to listen to and hear from their perspective how they hire <clears throat> speakers. Intensively, they brought the point home <coughs> excuse me, that a compelling story creates the connection with your audience so that you can teach them your message. They will be open to it. Just remember that your presentation is for them, not you. If you always keep your mind on your audience and their needs being met, it will make them more receptive to your message, a message that can be taught from the perspective of a lesson you learned. In other words, like, you know, from victim to victor, draws the audience in to connect because it's all about helping them. This is tricky because the more you show your problems, the more you connect with your audience. But I've seen some people really victimize themselves up on stage, and you don't want to narrate some boring old victim story. Uh, this is not a public forum therapy. You're going to have to really work at finding the right balance. All the while you're telling your story, remember the formula, tell them what you're going to tell them, then tell them, and then tell them what you just told them. You've got to bring the point home so that when they walk away, they know what the point was. You must have a strong opening in your speech as you build your story. You, just, you need to then give them hope and tell them how you dug yourself out of your hole, your action steps, maybe two or three of them. From there, you continue building your story about the results of your actions. After building the story and trust, you'll be able to give them the tools for a better life, or in other words, your methodology, because they'll be more, more open to it intellectually and emotionally. After all, they want to get to the point where you are, and your background makes you uniquely qualified to solve their problems. Once you have your speech or story written, you have to polish it to perfection. In order to polish your story, you need to tell it to everyone and anyone who will listen. The more you say it, the more polished it will become. To help you with your presentation skills, watch videos of speakers who've earned your respect. Watch them and see what resonates with you, and it's okay to emulate them until you develop your own style. Many of their strategies will mostly like, most likely work for you. Ultimately, you must be unique, and it must be natural, but this is all a work in pro progress. You have to use where you are now. When you tell everyone and anyone, get their feedback, because it's very helpful to hear what other people find interesting and funny or important what you think is funny and important may not be. I'll give you a story from a recent presentation I gave in Cincinnati at the Toastmasters convention. I actually gave a one-minute presentation on a, on a small story that I wrote for a Heart of a Ta Toastmasters book. And it was in front of 700 people. And I had practiced this over and over by myself. And when I stood up on stage and started giving it to the audience, I heard this ripple effect of laughter. And honestly, I didn't know that there was anything funny in my presentation. And it was actually because there were so many people, they were laughing at the name of my company because I used it, muffintopple.com. And everybody laughed. But in a, in a group of 700, it was a rippling effect. And by the time they started laughing and by the time the wave ended, I really thought I had Janet Jackson and had a a wardrobe malfunction, and I got so self-conscious that my one-minute 
well-rehearsed speech truncated to 37 seconds, and I left the stage praying that nothing was flying out, <laughs> flying by the seat of my pants, that nothing was actually flying out of the seat of my pants. And that really was not a crowning moment for me. It was all fine, but just, just um, you know, be sure that you know how people are going to react. Um, for me, the key to a, just to finalize this keynoting your story, for me, my key is to keep the keynote presentation light with humor. I punch it up with a humorous theme because I think it makes everybody happy and helps them learn better. It's something, if it's something that you're interested in learning how to do, Judy Carter does have a book that might be able to help you with this. It's called The Comedy Bible, and it's sold on Amazon. So that's my little plug for her. Okay, now you have your story and your keynote speech. It's time for the pitch. After all, without a sale, your speech is financially dead in the water. And yes, that was a play on words. The uh, the pitch must, ad must address their core problem and give your solution to that problem based on your professional and or personal expertise and results. So formulaically, the pitch must contain their problem, your expertise, results, and, and results with a call to action. So here's, here's what I'm talking about. How many of you name the problem? From my experience as your professional and personal expertise, I'm going to show you how to solve your problem. And if you'd like, an, it's um, basically your methodology. So here's an example of how my fitness speech might go. How many of you have excess weight around your middle? From my experience as a personal trainer and nutrition consultant who trains clients of all sizes and shapes, as well as competing as a power lifter, I'm going to show you how to topple your muffin. What I want you to do here is pitch your speech everywhere. The more you say it, the more polished it becomes. Besides, your dog and cat will probably love you for paying attention to them. Do this because I can't stress it enough. The more you do it, the better you get. It kind of goes back to that whole philosophy in weight training. It's called SAID. It's Specific Adaptation to Impose Demand. The more you demand of yourself from speaking, the better you get. So practice your speech. Practice your pitch. Okay, now moving on to more money things. There primarily are three bookable problem categories. And if you solve any of these problems, you can spell, sell your speech to corporations and meeting planners. It's the return on investment that people are looking for. Your speech can help them avoid the learning curves and stumbling blo blocks if, you pay, if they pay you how to tell them. So let me tell you what those three bookable problems are. Money, how to save it, how to acquire it, how to spend it, how to do X, Y, Z with it. People want to know. Relationships, love, divorce, team building, team communication, negotiation, making the workplace a better place. People don't even know how to treat other people anymore and are willing to pay to find out how to make the workplace or home place a less, a less toxic environment. And finally, this is kind of where I fall in, health. Many, of, For example, many of you may have money and love, but without your health, you can't enjoy it. How to eat, exercise, breathe, move, not move, not hurt, get to your A game, lose weight. People really don't know how to do this either, and there's a lot of nonsensical information out there. So they need someone to clear that crazy chatter, tell them the truth. So I don't really know exactly who my audience is today that, that's listening to this webinar, but it doesn't matter what you do. Back your way into this. And I think relationships is an easy one because you can back into relationships. If you, if you have, I mean, I'm going back to the money and health. If you have money and health, you might have better relationships. So try to figure out a way to get your speech into one of these three categories. Okay. At this most recent seminar that I went to, it was a 31-hour intensive conference, they talked about how to get paying jobs. And this was one of my favorite breakout sessions from the weekend. There was actually a certified meeting planner and a high-end speaking agent. That high-end speaking agent had seven clients. That's it. That's all she does all day is manage those clients, those speaking clients. 
and they gave us the tricks of the trade. Um, just as a point of interest, because I didn't know this, speaking bureaus are dedicated to the buyers, and speaking agents are geared toward the speakers. The bureau is like a personal shopper for meeting planners because they refer speakers while a manager makes sure the speaker is positioned well and gets the highest fee. You can be your own manager or have an assistant for this, but that's really the difference between the, the two people that talk to us at this breakout session. And now it's time to think like a meeting planner. They hire very slowly, if at all. She told us the number one thing she does is she goes to the, the speaker's website. Make sure that your website is awesome. Appearances are uber important. Have your speeches recorded so that they can see your work and have them on your website, or at the very least have a few spectacular YouTube unlisted videos that you can send them a link to. Your best-selling author video should be on your website. I know right now we're waiting for it, um, I have one from last year, and that's made a huge difference in my bottom line. When people see that, they always say, you're famous because it's such a top quality product that DN Agency offers us. Um, in addition, they actually recommended that we have a sizzle reel. You can make your own homemade one. That's what I thought about doing. I know DN Agency makes a phenomenal one. So. If that's not in your budget right now, it might be something in your near future or far future, or just make your own. Just make sure it looks good. This is the time to let your inner narcissist and perfectionist come out and play. Perception is the name of the game here, and meeting planners keep their job depending on how you make them look for hiring you. You really need to build their trust via the Internet. You see, I think I mentioned this before, they don't get fired for not hiring you. They get fired for hiring bad speakers. And it's better not to hire you if they don't know you or trust you. You need to build that trust through your website and other video media. Also work hard at elevating your brand because this can help build trust. Here's an example that they gave us. IBM actually has to pay to have its logo in a movie. And Apple is paid if their branded logo is shown in the movie. That's the difference between an elevated brand and a not elevated brand. So make sure that you have on your website everything that you are, your best-selling author summit or as seen on TV or, you know, Fox News, uh, CNN, whatever it is that, for example, DN Agency does for you. Um, or have a picture that you're seeing with people like Jack Canfield. We have that picture from the summit. It's, this really elevates your brand. Also, the, meeting, uh, the certified meeting planner talked about how she develops a plan for an event. Her first step is developing a budget. She chooses to spend a lot on speakers because they can make or break a meeting. They're a value add to a convention and meeting. And get used to that word. You're going to hear it a lot in, the, in meeting planning, value added. She Googles to find the right speaker and uses a website that you may want to join. She uses this one, speakermatch.com which has the topics and areas of speaking. The, so there are categories that you can put yourself in. Okay, let's see. Now, you, again, you have to keep thinking about what you have to offer a meeting planner. And there are 300 speaking bureaus in the United States. And this gets back to your pitch. The meeting planner recommended that we pay an administrative assistant to sign us up at all 300 speaking bureaus. I thought that was the golden nugget I got out of those 31 hours, like the biggest golden nugget. I have to say I haven't figured out where that list of 300 speaking bureaus is, but if anybody finds that, please email that to me at laura at muffintopple.com because getting on each of those lists, yes, it'll put you in the category of needle in the haystack, but figure out which ones, where you really want to speak, and start to get to know the people that are running those bureaus because the more they know you, the more they'll promote you. And we were told, bribe them. I'm not talking about money. They said they like chocolate. I'll send them chocolate all day long if they'll send me clients all day long. They also recommended that when we're in our town or out of our town, to go to these speaking bureaus and introduce yourself. You want to be remembered. Another piece of, uh, information, uh, I guess, advice they gave us was to... If you, if you get a call from out of town trying to book you, 
have them book you through a speaking bureau. It's 25%. They take their 25% cut, but that 25% will get you known because if you say get in touch with XYZ Speaking Bureau and they call that speaking bureau, that speaking bureau is going to remember you and they're going to hire you next time because you're a needle in a haystack. There are thousands of speakers on their bureau list. You want to be top of mind for them. Oh, here's another one worth mentioning. It seems like a no-brainer, but ask for referrals. When you go and give a speech somewhere and you knock it out of the ballpark, go to the meeting planner and say, bring your, bring your video with you. Have your video camera with you. Would you please give me a testimonial? Because that's super powerful. That meeting pl planner giving you a testimonial will tell another meeting planner, you can trust this speaker. So ask for referrals. Also ask, oh, I guess that's really more testimonials. You can also say, hey, if you liked me enough, can you refer me to three of your colleagues at a different firm? That's powerful. And finally, on this page, I'm going to talk about creating your electronic press kit or EPK. You can do this at speakerdemo.com. I have that link right there um, on my slide. Uh, you'll want to have the title of your speech, the pitch, their problem, your solution, all polished, your bio, your credentials. Remember, you're a best-selling author. That's like one of the best things you can say you are. And uh, have your clients and endorsements ready as you sign up there. Finally, well, not, maybe not finally, we're getting close to finally, how to negotiate your fees. Prices vary significantly. I'll, I'll give you an example they gave us. Malcolm Gladwell of... Um, uh, tipping Point fame and Outliers fame, he makes over $100,000 per speaking engagement. And the meeting planner told us that she hired a mom with a great message, and she made about $5,000. So there's a huge variety of what you can get paid. And I think the better you get, the more you get paid. Uh, I know that you're unique and definitely figure out what you think you're worth, and stand by your principle. Don't sell yourself short. Uh, just to let you know, generally for regional speakers, they're paid between $2,500 and $10,000, and national speakers are paid between $2,500 and $100,000. Understand your value proposition and educate people on what it, that is and how you can help them, and they'll pay you more for that. Okay, so here are some, here are some helpful hints. Never show your speaking prices on your website. I actually came home and changed my website. I don't know anything about HTML. I still have a very old website that my husband helps me manage. And I took my prices off because I realized if you don't get them on the phone, they can see your prices and leave. Um, you might lose them before ever having a chance to talk to them. And the prices on your website, they almost look at it as the beginning negotiation price, and you don't want that. You're better off scheduling a call and value adding if they like you and your services, product, or message. You want to stay true to your price. Okay, so I just pretty much said it. Get them on the phone. It's harder for them to hang up, unlike your website. Once you get them on the phone, make a date on your calendar to speak to them when they're not distracted and you're not distracted, and maybe even have the decision maker present. That would be the best scenario because you don't want an assistant who may or may not get you to the decision maker. This ensures that everyone is totally focused when they're on this phone call and hiring, on hiring a speaker for the event. This first conversation is the most crucial, so set it up so you can really focus and make sure that you know what you're both talking about. Get it on your calendar and their cal calendar. Um, once you have them on that dedicated phone call and your energy is high, you'll want to thank them for reaching out to you. Always give your thanks. Be grateful that they reached out to you. And it sets a great tone for the conversation. Then you want to ask them about their event. Tell me about your event. When is it? Where is it? How many will be there? Make sure you listen to them as if you're going to tell your story, their story back to them. And you are, because you're going to figure out your pitch and how that works into what they need out of you. And uh, we have two ears and one mouth. I'm sure you've heard it. It's better to listen and not speak as much. 
This phone call is about them and what you can do for them. Also, ask them what they want, th what they want their attendees to get afterwards. What do they want their attendees to learn or feel? What do, you want their, what, do you, what do they want their comments to be? Listen for the purpose of the conference. It's important to understand that purpose so that you can reach that purpose. Um, also find out who's spoken to this group before, names and or topics that will help you understand this group. Then you want to ask what their budget is. And you have to just listen because your price may be different. And from there, you say your fee. And then guess what you do? You remain silent. Let them go through the motions of, oh my God, or we don't have that kind of money, or sure, of course. When, meanwhile, they're thinking, I'll pay you 20000 for everything that you can offer me. They must, they must have their say. And that's a little uncomfortable being silent, but just be comfortable in your silence. Because if they say no, try to value add. There's that phrase again, value add. Because the biggest part is getting to a venue. Once you're there, you might as well spend an extra half hour. You could say, well, I'll spend an extra half hour, or I'll sign books, or I'll take pictures with everybody. Value add so that they feel you're really trying to work within their budget and give them everything that they want and more. Because remember, this is all about them. And I know Kathy talks about how to fundraise on a, on a sponsorship level. That was, you know, that's something that, that I won't get into today. All right, so how about how to make all gigs paying ones? Um, when I first began speaking, when we first begin speaking, we have more time than really money inflow, and it's totally okay to do unpaid speaking, uh, unpaid speaking gigs. One thing I've learned from Dar Darren LaCroix, a world champion speaker, is to never turn down stage time you can figure out how to make it profitable. But first, you must make it worth your while. Find the value for you and add it in. There's that term again, value add, but now it's working for you. First, anytime you speak, you're getting a lot out of it. This is because the more you speak, the better you get. I, I covered that earlier. It polishes you. And you get to see varying audiences' reactions. Some things you may think are interesting and funny, may not be to others. You get to see different groups responding, and you can cut and paste different items into your speech to get it better. Um, these, free, these free gigs basically become your crash, crash test dummies. Once you've given your speech in large and small groups, you'll see what works and what doesn't. Be unmerciful with your hacking and pruning and final touches. Even expensive professional speakers do this. It's it begins a relationship between them, the audience, and their speech. So how do you even find free gigs? Start, start making a list of free places to speak. Uh, you should make your own, but I, here's a list that I've thought of. Rotary clubs, Toastmasters, libraries, special interest groups, chambers of commerce, junior leagues, for me, gyms and health clubs, Kiwanis clubs, college universities and the related clubs, galas, women's expos, health expos, United Way. Here's one that sort of intrigued me, and I haven't had time to really look into it, but it's something called NAPO or NAPO, National Association of Professional Organizers. From these free speeches, you form relationships and become a better speaker, and more importantly, a trusted speaker. You can get gigs from those people who are present in the audience. These free gigs lead to paid ones when you are good and, and craft your speaking skills. Your listener will be as excited about your speech as you are. Before, uh, here's another thing: is having back of room sales. So before you begin, before you begin your your stage presence, you give the host or the person who introduces you your back of room sales. Give them your book, so that when they when they introduce you, they can hold it up and talk about you as you come on. It's going to make you look better. It's giving. It's giving. It's giving kudos to you, and now people know you have a product. They know you're somebody. I'm putting that sort of in fake quotes in my up here in in, uh, in La La Land. Anyway, uh, so the back of room sales ideas for this are books, booklets, CDs, DVDs, ta uh, taped speeches. Mention your product in your speech, and people will then become aware of it. Refer to it as the 
the back of room table as an autograph table instead of, you know, where I sell my books. If you have enough money, hire assistants to help you work the table. It looks more official. It was also recommended to me that we bundle our inexpensive items with our expensive ones. I personally don't have expensive ones yet, but it, people want to take you home with them, and they will go for your lowest priced item. It's a way to get them into your funnel. But if you want to make some money at those gigs, try to bundle it and decrease your more expensive ones so that they can get more of you and you bring more money home that day. Uh, people, once you bundle it, they're, they're pretty willing to spave. I'm a, I'm a spaver myself. That's where you spend and save at the same time. Also, request that you make a video of your speaking to this group. If nothing else, you get your own feedback. You can watch it go. And sometimes that's painful, but hopefully it's painless. And if you're in a great venue, you'll have a video that can become a product later. Maybe you'll give part of your keynote speech or five pieces of advice to a group. Start thinking about how you can now take this and create product out of it. Also, request an, an attendee list with uh, the names of the attendees and emails. You'd be surprised at how many people are actually willing to share that with you if you come speak to them for free. I, I was amazed. I, you can really build your list from there. Finally, tweet about it. Now, I'm not, a, I'm not a tweeter. I don't know that much about it. I actually have a very silent Twitter account. But from what I understand, when you find the person who's leading the group, you hashtag onto them, which gives you higher visibility, and you get their traffic. This also helps you hook into what they're thinking, saying as a group, and can help you get further paying gigs or certainly hook into the group so that you can sort of understand what they're talking about and speak their speak back to them. It will further build trust. Okay. Oh, and uh, also those video testimonials I talked about earlier, get video testimonials of the people in the audience. This is a great way to build a video testimonial with, with a large group. All right, so we're almost done here. Some final golden nuggets. After a wonderful presentation, get the meeting planner to give a video testimonial. I think I mentioned that earlier, but it's worth mentioning again. It's a powerful moment that the decision maker's opinion has, and it will carry a lot of weight for a future decision maker. If they can refer you to more friends, all the better. But right then and there, you've captured that magic moment. You've just knocked a speech out of the ballpark. You want to capture their reaction. Have that video camera nearby. Men can put it in their pockets. I don't usually have pockets where I can stick a video camera without it looking bulky and horrible. But I would probably have it just off stage. And you've got it to capture that moment. Also asking the person who hired you if they would introduce you to three of their peers. That can build your business in no time flat because you tell two friends and they told two friends and so on and so on. It's very powerful. And uh, finally, whether you're at home or out of town, visit those speakers bureaus. Get their attention. Let them know who you are. Be kind. And and you will start to build trust, and you will build a very, very lucrative speaking business very quickly. And again, I want to thank you all so much for your time. If you have any questions, feel free to email me at laura at muffintopple.com. Kathy, are you there? Trying to still get in touch with Kathy, because we had a couple questions at the end of the webinar last time. Uh, one of them was actually a comment given by Tony Sidio, who suggested that he actually is a member of a couple speaking bureaus, and he found that if he put his his um, if he kept changing his bio, it put him at the top of the list of speakers. So that was a great nugget he gave me, which I didn't know before. And uh, I don't know if Kathy's there now. I'm, but, I'm here now. Okay, yeah. And you had a question last time too, didn't you, Kathy? Yeah, so my question, and I actually changed it because I think going through this second, a second time with you, <laughs> which is great. This is great information. I actually learned a few more nuggets from you this time around. Now, there, you shared a lot of information, but if you can just sum it up for that aspiring professional speaker, what 
top three things do you recommend that they should do right now to get started? The, um, the, the, I think they need to polish their speech, get their speech written, assuming now let's say it's written, polish it. Start telling it as many places as you can. You've got to get the feedback and make sure you have a knock it out of the ballpark speech because without that, you're not going to go any further. So that would be my first piece of advice. My second piece of advice would be find a group that you feel you'll resonate with and go give that speech and knock it out of the ballpark and ask for those referrals and testimonials. I think those will go a long way because that next gig will be pay paying. And uh, that's two. Let's see. I guess I would then go and find at least one to three speaking bureaus where you feel that you belong and really get to know them. Make sure that you build trust. Even if you do a free gig for them, knock that out of the ballpark because I really think that they will then be your best advocate. They'll remember you. So those would be my three piece of ad pieces of advice. That's what I'm planning to do. Um, I really, I have a, a I have wellness seminars now. I have 13 whole health wellness seminars, and I just have to knock that first one, which is my signature one, out of the ballpark, and that will get more people pulled in, like, we love you, we want to hire you. Wow, you have 13. Wow, 13 weeks, that can make a big difference in someone's life. So it gets back to that pitch again. So, you know, they're all sort of, I'm sorry, I, it's it's difficult to say what the three no, most I think, things are, no, but I those think are those, what I do. No, I think those are actually, they're actually really good because you do have to start somewhere. And the first thing that someone must do, especially if they're trying to become a professional speaker, is to polish their presentation. And then secondly, they need to belong to a group or some type of organization where they can start promoting themselves. And then I think the last uh, last. Thursday session, you talked about Toastmasters, and you are a member of Toastmasters, and I think you are in the advanced level of Toastmasters because you're doing a little bit more, but that's definitely a place where someone can get started, and and asking, asking for more, for, for testimonials, for videos, for referrals, I think it's key. I, I agree. I shared some great things today. I think more so than last week on Thursday. So for the <laughs> folks who felt like, bummer, Laura is re-recording this, this is actually, um, you know, I think she's added just a few more things there that really bedazzled this presentation up. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Kathy. You know, it sort of it it further promotes my point. The more you do it, the better you get the specific right. attitude exposed to right. And it's it's my it's pleasure. To be able to, that's right. That's exactly right. It, it it was an opportunity to study this. This really helps me because I'm in my quest of becoming a highly paid professional speaker, and I I feel like I'm further along my path, and certainly by trying combing through the over 50 hours of material that I've I've done over the last 5 weeks that's that's a tremendous amount of work I've put into it this has really helped me call for myself and figure out what are the steps I'm going to take because you can get overwhelmed there if you just take one of these things that I've taught you today it's going to make you better and then you just build it's like learning your abc's to learn how to read and then reading to learn. It's, you know, it's just a building block. And no matter where you are in the process, I've met a lot of people, especially in Toastmasters, where they want to break into the professional speaking and they don't know how to do it. So they need to build their story. But then some people already have their story and they don't know how to sell it. It's a spectrum and we're all in a different location on the spectrum. And as long as you just keep furthering yourself and professionally developing yourself, you're going to just get better at it. So I'm excited to be part of people's journey today. Thank you so much for all your help in facilitating this. Not a problem. And for the listeners, if there's any feedback, any comments on today's Laura's presentation, she's got her email right there, laura at muffintopple.com. We're also on Facebook. As you know, we're a part of the private group. 
the summit 2013 after party. Your comments and feedback is greatly appreciated. If you'd like us to do more of these, do let us know. I'm sure Laura and I will come up with more things as her and I are trying to polish ourselves up and become paid, highest, high paid professional speakers. And for others who want to do something like see this, reach out to me. I'd love to hear your idea and I would love to facilitate it for you. And any final, um, and I'm just going to turn it over to Laura to close this session. Well, thank you, Kathy. Thank you again, everyone, for listening. It's, it's um, <laughs> 50 hours boiled down to one, or I, I really honestly did not, did not count the time. But I you know, appreciate you listening to it. And thank you so much for all that you've done for me. I, I've appreciated you all be, be, being part of my journey. Thanks, Kathy.